Hello, it's John Heaton. Today I'm going to review the Bob Dylan album, Slow Train Coming, uh, from 1979. Now, I have reviewed this album on my channel before, but it was one of two that I recorded downtown in Budapest in the middle of the traffic, and it was a bit noisy. I re-recorded the Let It Be one, and I think I'm going to re-record this one because not ideal uh, surroundings for a video. So, um, and it's such an important album, and it's really one of Bob's best. Uh, came out on the 20th of August, 1979. Quite rare for an album to come out in August. I was trying to think if I could remember others. Revolver comes to mind. Um, um, so, and it was the follow-up to Street Legal, which had got a kind of mixed response from the critics the previous year. Some people accused Bob of being a little bit sexist in the lyrics and the production was a bit muddy, although the remastered version in the late 90s was a vast improvement. Um, I personally think Street Legal is a wonderful album and you can see signs of Bob's impending spirituality in the lyrics of that album. Very clear signs. Um, biblical imagery in many of the songs. So, so this Prob probably needn't have come as a shock, uh, the shock that it did, because it, Bob lost a, new, a whole lot of fans with this album so, who thought that uh, they didn't need to be preached at by Bob, the one who'd always said, don't follow leaders, watch your parking meters, and here he was um, saying that this is the only way. and. Uh, some people had a problem with that, but he gained a whole new audience of Christians and people who appreciated the spiritual message of this material. And he was to do three albums in, in this vein, this one saved and Slow Train Coming. This is my new vinyl, by the way, which is considerably darker cover. It's a bit strange. The same thing with Nash Nashville Skyline. Uh, the new vinyl is a lot darker. I can't believe that's deliberate. I think it just must be poor quality reproduction of the uh, of the cover. Um, so what else can we say about this album? It's produced wonderfully by Barry Beckett and Jerry Wexler. Uh, I think the sound on this album is about as good as on any, any Dill album in his entire career. And as I say, coming after the slightly muddy production of Street Legal, it was a breath of fresh air. Um, it's different, it's a lot slicker to the production of, say, Desire, which is more reliant on a kind of, you know, f rough feel with the superb drumming and um, the, the violin from Scarlett R Rivera. Um, but this is a lot altogether more slick, and Bob had seen the last concert of the first. I think it was the first Dire Straits tour of, I'm not sure if it was in, he saw them in the UK or the US, but um, he was very impressed and he contacted uh, the, the band and said, can Mark Knopfler and the guitarist and Pick Withers, the drummer, come and play on his record? And they luckily, luckily for everyone, they said yes, and they do, they do brilliantly. So it doesn't mean this sounds like a Dire Straits record, but Knopfler's guitar is very distinctive and adds a whole level of colour to the whole proceedings. Um, he just plays just the, just the right amount of guitar fills. He doesn't do any extravagant solos like on um, Sultan's A Swing. But on a song like Precious Angel, just gorgeous little licks in between the verses. And uh, I'm not sure if he came up with those himself, whether Bob suggested them or the producer suggested them. I'm guessing it was mainly Mark Knopfler being given a free reign to come up with the guitar parts. Um, also, quite amusingly, we have Bob Dylan trying to convert Jerry Wexler, the, produ the producer, to Christianity. And Jerry Wexler said, Bob, you're dealing with a 62-year-old confirmed Jewish atheist. I'm hopeless. Let's just make an album. <laughs> Also on this album we have, I, I'm just going to check the inner sleeve because I, I think I know it by heart, but yeah, bass, 
Tim Drummond, who would play on Saved as well, and Shot of Blood, I think. Um, horns, the muscle shoals, horns section. Um, backing vocals, Carolyn Dennis, Helena Springs, and Regina Havis. So Carolyn Dennis was to marry Bob Dylan, and they would be together for around 10 years, and that was kept pretty much a secret, um, which is quite interesting. Helena Springs co-wrote a couple of tracks with Eric Clapton. Uh, sorry, co-wrote a couple of tracks with Bob Dylan for the Eric Clapton album, Backless. Um, Walk Out in the Rain and If I Don't Be There by Morning. So this is a small world in the, uh, the upper echelons of uh, musicians globally in this type of music anyway. Um, Bob, the, the album was, as I say, mixed reviews. We had people like T Charles Shah Murray. I'll just read you out a bit of what he said because it's uh, quite interesting. Um, Bob Dylan has never seemed more perfect or more impressive than on this album. He has also never seemed more unpleasant and hate-filled. Uh, and then he went on to say that there's enough people preaching stuff in the world without Bob Dylan being added to the list. Um, other fans mourned his uh, lack of openness. Um, uh, let me see, Grail Marcus. Dylan's received truths never threaten the unbeliever, they only chill the soul. Accused Dylan of selling a prepackaged doctrine, doctrine he's received from someone else. According to Clinton Halen, Marcus isolated slow train cometh greatest floor, an inevitable byproduct of his determination to capture the immediacy of new sound, newfound faith in song. Uh, another critic said the lyrics are indifferently crafted. Nevertheless, this is the best album since Blood and the Tracks. The single is passionate and detailed. Uh, Jan, Jan Wenner, the famous Rolling Stone founding editor, proclaimed it one of the finest records Dylan has ever made. However, in an interview in Rolling Stone, Anne Druin stated, the thing that I always loved about Dylan was the courage of his metaphors and the way he could cut to the bone of some kind of naked feeling. It always seemed very gutsy, and now it seems he's turned away. He's blinded by the light, and so he looks for some easy explanation. So mixed reviews. I think the fans received it well because it got to number two in the UK and number three in the US. And he won a, a vocal Grammy, I think, for his performance of Gotta Serve Somebody, which you can see him performing it on Saturday Night Live. And I think there's a TV performance, in fact, I know there is, from the same period with Tim Drummond and Jim Keltner on the drums and he's performing When Are You Gonna Wake Up, Gotta Serve Somebody. And uh, one other track from this album, I Believe In You, I think it is. And I, could, I was trying to find the DVD of that to show you, but I can't locate it. Um, so I think Bob, uh, John Lennon picked up on this song and reacted humorously with his own, own song, Serve Yourself. So instead of saying, you, got to serve somebody, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord. John Lennon's response was, you got to serve yourself, no one else is going to do it for you. And that song would not be released in his lifetime, but it was posthumously released. Um, when he returns, possibly the greatest track on the album was the last to be laid down. And unbelievably, he was going to ask Carolyn Dennis or um, Helena Springs to sing the lead vocal. But then when he did a guide vocal with Barry Beckett playing that superb, colourful piano, he must have changed his mind. And he puts in, then he practiced the vocal overnight, came back the next day, and then nailed it. And it's a brilliant performance. Um, it is, as I say, probably the best song on the album. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of strong competition because Gotta Serve Somebody at the beginning is stood the test of time. Both my sons love that track. Uh, and they're only 19 and 18 years old, respectively. Uh, uh, like, might like to wear cotton, might like to wear silk, might like to drink whiskey, might like to drink milk. You know, loads of rhymes like that. And uh, 
very, very nicely sung. And Precious Angel is just a would-be single. God knows why it wasn't a hit. Maybe it's because Dylan's voice isn't that radio friendly, but it has all the, ho all the qualities needed for it to be a huge hit single. Maybe if someone else had released it under, under, under a more commercial voice, it might have been a, a monster hit. I Believe in You is an impassioned love song to his God and uh, very moving. One critic says it's slightly spoilt by the paranoid use of the third person saying they show me to the door. They say don't come back no more. Um, but it's heartfelt and Slow Train is the title track and a marvellous closer to side one, admittedly with some slightly dodgy lyrics about Arabs walking around uh, like kings and stuff. Um, brilliant live version of that song in particular on this bootleg series volume 13. Uh, absolutely superb live version of Slow Train on that live box set. Um, side two opens with Gonna Change My Way of Thinking, which is a good storming rocker. Perhaps not the best, but uh, decent. And then Do Right Unto Me is a pleasing song with some pleasing, simple but effective lyrics. When are you going to wake up? Has nice use of horns from Muscle Shoals um, and a, quite a funky track. Tim Drummond playing the bass very well on this. Uh, Man Gave Names to the Animals. Probably nearly a, could be called a children's track, but uh, very amusing lyrics, you know. Goes through the animal kingdom, wasn't too small and he wasn't too big. Ah, I think I call it a pig. Um, and I like the end, about disappeared by a tree near a lake. And he doesn't sing the last line, going to call it a snake. And the snake obviously has huge... Significance uh, biblically as being the, who te the animal that tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden and all that. So, and then we finish with when he returns. Now, uh, uh, whether it's the strongest album of the trilogy, I don't know, because Saved is, certainly runs it close. And there's perhaps a warmer album and more devotional. But th and this is a little bit preachy. But this one has Mark Knopfler on guitar, which probably gives it I'll probably give it the nod for that reason alone and, and for the production alone because the production was saved leaves, leaves a bit to be desired and Shot of Love is perhaps not so much, the material's not quite so strong with a few exceptions. So this is a definite highlight of Bob's career. If you're new to Bob, I can think of far w worse places to start off and uh, if you haven't listened to this album but you know it's out there, well check it out on Spotify or you don't have to buy it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.